If I cover this up, you may think I got this gaming PC on the shelf from Walmart. This look is pretty disappointing and sad. And today we are gonna find out how good or bad this brand new R16 is. There will be a lot of information covered in this video, so I'm gonna skip the unboxing and IOs. If you want to see it, you can check out my unboxing video right here. As of I made this video, there was no option of the chassis color to choose from. It only comes with the black ones. And also there are many configuration either. The most basic one is with the i7 13700F RTX 4070 Ti and the 16 gigabyte RAM. The max you can go is the i9 13900F RTX 4070 Ti and the 64 gigabyte RAM. And they both come with the 1000 watts plenty power supply. But for any configurations, there are no cryotech cooling options anymore. Oh, I have to mention, now you can can reject those e-waste keyboard and mouse combo. You just have to have them. The price for the R16 in the Aurora family is the cheapest of all time. The max version is only $2,500, which is really budget friendly. And the shipping speed is amazing too. I got mine in a week from ordering, production and shipping and got my door. And that is incredible compared to the previous Alienware product. The whole case of this R16 is made with plastic and the side panel feels like acrylic or some other kinds of plastic. It's clear enough to see through, but it's very easy to get dust on them. The RGB effect has been cut down a lot on this R16 too. Now we only have the logo in the front, the ring on the side, and the rear fan. They took down the RGB from the liquid cooling, which was on the R13 and R15, and also the RGB bar in the case. Now I feel like there is no point of owning this clear side panel because it's just nothing to see. Yeah, right, the GPU has LEDs, but it got blocked by the ventilations on the side panel. So the cooling part seems pretty good on this R16. There are more vents on the top of the case now with nothing to block the airflow. And in front of the case, behind the front panel, there are more vents for the air intake. And also we have the rear fan pulling out the air from the case. So beside the good looking, the R16 is really focusing on the performance and cooling. And hopefully they can add more configuration down to the road so the performance is not limited by the components. The overall size of this R16 is definitely smaller than the R15 or the R13 since a lot of plastic decoration has been taken off. But inside the chassis, there's not much change at all. Even the motherboard is the same. And the layout of the components is pretty much the same too. On the top of the case, it's the 240 millimeter radiator for the liquid cooling. At the back of the case, where was the 120 millimeter fans attached. And in the front of the case at the bottom side, there's another 120 millimeter fans. And our CPU is here. And here are the RAM slots, which have only two. And for the storage, you can put in two M.2 SSD, total eight terabytes. And if you want more storage, there's another hard drive bay down here. The GPU is still on the top of the power supply trying to breathe, but we will see the result after the test. I did a quick test for this external Atana for the Wi-Fi connection. And after five tests without it, this is what we got. The average download speed is 483 megabits and the average upload speed is 23. And after five tests with the Atana, this is what we got. The average download speed is 554 and the average upload speed is about the same, which is 23. So with this Atana, the Wi-Fi connection is definitely stable and faster. And this is surely a pretty good thing to be attached. And for the performance testing, everything is under stock settings. So what I got is exactly what you're gonna get. I first did the GPU stress test. After 30 minutes, the average FPS was 268 with the max temperature 74. After an hour, the max temperature was still at 74 and the FPS was 270. The noise level across the entire testing was around 42 decibel, which is really good. So the little gap between the GPU and the PSU has nothing to worry about. Our GPU can be able to breathe. Then I run the Cinebench for the CPU. Under single core, we got 1987 while the CPU managed an average temperature of 40 
and max at 67. Under multi-cores, we got a 20,448, while the CPU managed an average temperature of 44 and max at 66. And I checked on the internet, that score was actually pretty low. So I went ahead and turned on the performance mode in the Alienware command center and changed the power mode from balance to performance too. Then I turned off the recording. This time we got a slightly better score with a single core 2010 and the multi cores 24,318. But these are still lower than we're supposed to get. If we look closely, you will notice that the clock speed and the power are only at half of its full potential. Since the CPU is not unlocked, I can't really manually change the clock speed to get a full potential, but I'm still trying to get a good score on this PC. So if you know the issue, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. In the time spy test, we got 22,803 on the GPU and 15,330 on the CPU. And the total score is 21,249 which is still slightly lower than the average too. So the CPU is definitely the issues here. However, even though the testing score is kind of lower than the average, gaming on this PC is very smooth like a butter. In the red depth redemption, everything on Ultra 1440p, we are getting an average FPS at 112. The CPU temperature is around 50 and the GPU is around 70. In the Witcher 1440p Ultra, average FPS is around 140 and the temperature is still very solid. I switch the settings to the ray tracing ultra, we are getting an average FPS at 100 and the temperature are still the same. In the Tube Rider 1440p Ultra, average FPS is around 204 and the temperature are still the same. And in the Cyberpunk 1440p Ultra, average FPS is around 88 and I changed it to the ray tracing overdriven, the highest possible settings. We are still getting an average FPS of 50 and the temperatures are still rock solid. It's very cool. And the noise level is really good across all the games on this PC. Taking the Cyberpunk as an example, under the ray tracing overdriven, the noise level is around 40 decibels. And my tester is pretty close to the case though. In real life, this thing is very quiet compared to the previous Auroras. If you have your audio on, either speakers or headphones, it's very hard to notice that this guy is running. But one thing that bothers me is the RGB effects that automatically change when I play different games. So I checked the Alienware command center. Now they have five tabs, dashboard, performance, Alienware FX, library, and Dolby. In the performance, you can set your PC to different modes. And in the Alienware FX, they added this select all feature that allows us to change the color for all Alienware devices altogether, which is really cool. And next is the library, which hurts me the most. All the games here are automatically added when we first play them, and they will be assigned a RGB theme to them. So every time we play them, the RGB effect changes. That's okay. But what hurts the most is that we can really delete those effects. The only solution that I have right now is to add a theme that matches our system theme for the games that you don't want it to change. And then it will stay the same RGB effect with your system. And I hope they can fix that issue with the next update. So the pros of this PC, good price after all, quiet and really good gaming machine, easy to upgrade, and fast and stable Wi-Fi connection. And the cons, not so alien we're looking. The clear side panel is not glass, not enough RGB effect in the chassis. And lastly, dial didn't sponsor me. Leave your comment below of what you think about this R16 and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.